Hey guys, GreatGamer34 here. Today I have something really cool, and I have made painted Minecraft. So what I mean by that is, here's an 8x8 screen. I can select where I want a cursor to go and select that bit. And it, it, if I select it when it's off, it'll turn on. When I select it when it's on, it'll turn off. I also have these function, these buttons here to make it the cursor move. This plots the point. That's the on-off switch clear screen and flood screen buttons. So let's turn it on. So when we turn it on, you'll notice we get a blinking cursor. Um, we can move that cursor around in any direction. Like so. And we could also plot points. So I'll just go through and plot some points. So, but let's say, let me just move my cursor. Let's say we don't want this point right here, but we don't want to erase the whole screen. We could just go up, move our cursor up, click that, and that turns that pixel off. So there's our cursor. But let's say we're too lazy to reset the entire screen manually. We just come over here, click clear screen, and we're left with just our cursor. Now another cool thing, we have flood screen. It does exactly that, just floods the screen. Don't know why it's useful, but if you ever need it, there it is. You can also do flood screen again to turn it off. Or it'll flood it the opposite color, but sometimes that happens, so I don't really like doing that. But let's say we flood the screen again. That pixel gets inverted because it'll it'll just invert whatever you have, basically. So let's say I draw an image. I drew that image. Now I want to invert it. Oh. Yeah, I just, I just moved my cursor. There's that inverted image. So I just did that. So it pretty much inverts an image however you want it to be inverted. So that's pretty useful. Let me go ahead and clear the screen. And I will draw something. Okay, so I'm going to draw something, but I'm going to speed this up. So, let's turn it on. Get my cursor where I need it. Somewhere up over here. Ready? Here I go. And there it is, the creeper face. So now that I drew this, I can also invert it using this flood screen. I should probably name that invert. Do that. Go to my cursor. We've an inverted creeper face. And we could just keep doing that however many times we want. So I think that's a really cool function to have added to this. Whoops, derp. Well, that's what happens when you mess around too much, and just clear screen. Now I guess I'll show you how it works. Okay, so first let's follow these buses all the way to over here. You will notice these mechanisms. Two inputs, one on the top, one on the bottom. These are actually shift registers. What happens is you have data stored in it, and you can shift that data up or down, depending on when you click uh, uh, when you click up or down button on this because this controls the Y axis. When you do that, it'll turn off here. 
and allow this line to be off here. When you there's another one on the X, which will do the same thing. It'll control whether you're shifting up or down on the X axis, which is your left and right. That'll control, uh, for instance, this. No, not that one. It'll control this one right here. But since the screen is off, this torch is on, powering up through anyway. But this would be off, decoding wherever. It'll decode to right here. It'll decode to that torch. X Y decoder. Now there's another AND gate here built in for plotting the points because in our cell we have a couple of things built into the cell. We have this and we have uh, this right here. So basically this button will trigger the T flip flop which actually saves data in right here for the T flip flop and allows it to pass through to the screen. Our T flip flops change state every time you press the button. So now that's not powered. Now down here is a clock in the cell. So that's how we actually get the clock being powered. That is located right oops, right here. And it's just a simple comparator clock. Um, each cell has that in it. And it's controlled by this XY decoder, so I need to choose whether I'm using the clock or plotting a point, and that's what this is for right here. This tells you whether you're going to be plotting a point. If you want to plot a point, this will turn off. It'll decode this value up here and allow the T flip flop to go through and plot a point. Even though if the clock's still going, you're not going to be able to see the clock because of the T flip flop. So that's how that works. Now. The logic, this is my second version that I made. I didn't publish the first one I was going to, and then I figured I'd add the reset to it because I didn't have reset. The way this T flip flop works is it uses a th two tick pulls here, goes through, and triggers this repeater lock to switch states. Using that method, I know that if there's longer than two tick pulls, I will not be able to write any data or save data or switch data. So that's what how this reset works. It gives it a pulse for longer than three, uh, two ticks. This gives it an eight tick pulse because the button tick is eight pull ticks. I'm pretty sure. That makes it so it erases every data in there and not allowed to write. So if we follow this line, we will notice that it's, whoops, comes all the way around and is hooked up to the reset right here clear screen but you notice that we have flood screen oh that whole uh, thing about three tick pulses I just make this generate a three tick pulse or a two tick pulse come through here and go back and swap flip every data that's in every T flip flop so using one line it can do, do two different options so that's how that works and then it's bust down to his standard screen Nothing special. <coughs> and that's how it works, excuse me.